morning. Today we are having Dr. Karen Ellers, a senior lecturer at the Department of Forensic and Genetics. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you for having me. Uh, doctor, can you share with us how did you become a researcher? Now, after I completed my um, degree here at the University of the Preset, my BSc and my honours degree, I was employed by the ARC in Irene at in Pretoria, where I did um, DNA parentage verification on different horse breeds. And I continued with my master's and my PhD while working at the ARC, and I um, got involved with wildlife forensic research. Um, which I'm very passionate about, and then um, I applied for a post here at the university, and now I'm back here at the university presenting forensic genetics classes. Okay, thank you, Doctor. And then what are you currently working on at the moment? Um, currently, I do a lot of things. <laughs> I am um, a board member of the National Forensic Oversight and Ethics Board, where we do oversight over the forensic laboratories and the National Forensic um, DNA database. Then I'm also the program director of the Forensic Sciences program, where we are always looking into bettering our program. We are currently busy working on a honors degree in forensic entomology. And then um, I'm also still involved with a lot of research, um, which focuses mainly on wildlife forensics. But we also have human forensic research that focuses on touch DNA, as well as YSTR markers that we are looking into. Thank you so much. Doug. And then coming to forensic uh, genetics, one will look at the ethics as one of the main driver behind uh, the, the project of forensic uh, genetics. So, what role is ethics playing in genetics? It's, it plays a very, very big role. Um, even on an undergrad level, we're already presenting that as part of our course material as well. And since forensics is a very new field, um, there's a lot of new challenges as well. For example, recent debates about using that ancestry databases where people send the DNA to determine where they come from. They are currently can um, they currently they can also use it for uh, forensic purposes where they get forensic investigative leads based on that by running searches against um, crime scene samples. So um, and then it becomes an ethical question that needs to be addressed and answered by the forensic community: what is acceptable, what is not acceptable, and we really try to teach our students that they must know themselves because when they work under that amount of pressure and working with people that's been through trauma, you really need to have strong ethical values when you do forensic sciences work. So it's so uh, one of the core foundations when you do forensic research. Thank you. And then the genetic markers, what, what role do they play in this? Forensic genetic area. The markers. Um, when, with the current forensic markers that we are um, talking about is called short tandem repeat markers. Um, that's what they are currently using when they um, get a DNA profile based on those markers. We amplify specific areas of the DNA that you amplify, make multiple copies of that, and then it gets visualized on the genetic analyzer. It's represented as peaks. And it's unique to each and every person so you can identify a person if you found blood on the crime scene or saliva or human touch DNA from a fingerprint you can get a DNA profile from those samples and you can identify that person but as this is an evolving field they are starting to look into different marker sets as well um, I've talked about the ancestral markers where you can get vi uh, visual characteristics of a person you can see whether the person's got red hair, blonde hair blue eyes, brown eyes, or um, also on the Y is the R markers, which is mainly focused on male DNA. So yes, there's lots of advances coming along with forensics. Thank you, Doctor. And then coming to the, the, the gaps in your field of study, do we have some exciting gaps? Yes, <laughs> definitely. Um, as I said, because it's a new research field, Really, there's lots of things popping up that's becoming more and more challenging and where lots of research is needed. 
Uh, for example, with mixture sample interpretation, where you've got um, two persons' DNA that's mixed on a crime scene to interpret those profiles. And it's not just in forensic genetics, but I think in all the various fields in forensics, for example, with uh, fingerprints, the taking of fingerprints, or um, trace evidence, um, there's a lot of foundation research that still needs to be done, and uh, validated studies that needs to be done in those fields. So um, it's a vast growing field, and technology is really picking up speed. <laughs> so yeah, we have to keep up with that. So there's lots of opportunities for research. Thank you. And then looking at the artificial intelligence, what role will it play on forensic uh, genetics? With the AI part, um, I'm not sure what role that will start playing um, in the forensic field. Um, because our field is more focused on the scientific analysis of evidence at crime scene, so we're not really IT related um, crimes that we are currently looking into in our program. But um, you know, I assume with writing reports and so forth, but usually there are standardized methods for writing reports and it goes through various people okay. you know, in the writing reports. Thank you. And then looking at uh, the criminal justice, we found that there are cases that are still unresolved and also, there are still a lot of backlogs when it comes to this DNA profiling. Will your department be in a position to help to speed up the process? Um, yeah, we are not service rendering laboratories. We really, our focus is on teaching and learning and doing research. Um, in terms of the DNA backlog, I think the Forensic Science Laboratory really made a huge impact in what they did to address that issue because it was mainly um, based on the funding for the forensic laboratory and contract management and I think these things have been resolved as you would have seen in the newspapers as well. Um, the backlog has been eradicated now um, and all forensic laboratories will always have a backlog. You know, it's, it's not as if it will magically disappear. All laboratories have a backlog, but they usually try to keep it um, keep it within the ten percent range. That's it's still manageable, and we are back to manage the backlog. So currently, the police is doing a great job of doing that, and um, all forensic genetic work and forensic work is done by the South African Police Forensic Services Laboratory. So it's not it's not private owned laboratories that do DNA testing for criminal cases. And then. What message can you say to aspiring researchers? For researchers in forensics, I would say it's very rewarding. <laughs> Firstly, I think you are involved with research where you can see what the impact will be, what the contribution will be, and forming part of a bigger system. It, it, it's a great feeling when you can make South Africa safe again. Um, if you can contribute to getting a criminal removed from society to make it safe. So I really feel it's a very, very rewarding feeling where you can see where your research is going, yeah, making a contribution. Well, thank you so much. And then looking at the scope of forensic uh, genetics, we, we are now aware that forensic clinical medicine and then forensic uh, psychiatry, what role now is forensic genetics play in those fields? In those fields. Um, there's a huge difference. I always try to explain to the students as well. You've got the forensic sciences, which is where our degrees lie. It's everything on the crime scene except the human body lying there. And when you look at forensic pathology, the medicine side, that's everything on the human body. So they do collect evidence oh. from the human body, but forensic sciences is mainly focusing on the crime scene itself. So it's the scientific analysis of evidence found at a crime scene that we are involved with. Where the forensic pathologist is, you know, they've got the medical doctors that then specialize in forensic pathology. So 
So they spent years and years to acquire that knowledge. So huge respect to them for doing that work as well. And the forensic um, psychology, it's people that studied psychology as a major and then they specialized in that postgrad. Yeah. So it's totally different from what we are doing. Yeah. Okay. At least we have learned something <laughs> for today. <laughs> Thanks, Doctor. And then, apart from research, what are your other interests? Well, this is painting. <laughs> I love to paint, um, especially murals. So, with my kids' rooms as well, the more glitter I can put on the walls <laughs> and brighter colors, the happier I am. So, I love to paint murals. My well, house is full of it. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for sharing with uh, us. Thank you. And thank you. Are very fortunate that to, to have you in our midst. Oh, we thank you. you a little. Oh, thank you for this opportunity. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.